So, good morning, everyone. My name is Simon Randava, and on behalf of Sandalwood Heights Secondary School, I'm happy to welcome you and thank you all for being here today. We would first like to thank everyone who is here today and who has helped make this event possible. The ministry staff, our volunteers, school administrators, as well as our fellow students. Today, we have some very special guests here as we will listen to a very special announcement from the Minister of Education, Indira Nedu Harris. Amongst our guests present here today include the Honorable Minister Indira Nedu Harris, the Minister of the Status of Women and Member of Provincial Parliament, Ms. Harinder Mali, the Director of Education for the Parliament, uh, for the Peel District School Board, Peter Joshua, and also the Member of Provincial Parliament, Vic Delon from, for Brampton West. We also have the trustee, Harkirit Singh, superintendent of education, Pat Noble, and of course, the executive director of the Sikh Heritage Museum, Pradeep Singh Nagra. Thank you to all for being here today. We're so honored you have chosen our school to be the host for this announcement. We ask that you please join us in welcoming our very first guest speaker, the director of education for the Pila District School Board, Peter Joshua himself. Thank you very much, and that was such a beautiful uh, introduction. So good morning, everyone. I was really pleased that uh, you've named a number of very important people here, and I want to extend my greetings as well on behalf of the Peel District School Board. Um, I'm, I'm really pleased that uh, my uh, colleague, member of my team, Superintendent Pat Noble is here, as well as our trustee, Harkirit, is here as well. Um, I do want to send regrets from our chair, Janet McDougald, and our vice chair, Suzanne Nurse, for, for various reasons. They just couldn't be here, but very much here in spirit and very, uh, very, very pleased um, to, uh, to see so much or to, to, uh, to have me speak on their behalf about the, the wonderful things that are happening in our schools. And I am so honored again to have the opportunity to uh, be, here, be here with our new Minister of Education. Um, and I've said this before to uh, her, her, her Honor Indira Nadu Harris that uh, you speak with such uh, uh, passion and you're a genuine individual and I, I really do appreciate uh, when you come and share with us uh, what, what education means to you because so much of what you say uh, is what we live and, and, and breathe every day in our school. So your support uh, for our students and for what education and understanding about each other, uh, what it means, it means a lot to us. So thank you for that. And, and of course, our, our wonderful uh, Minister of Status of Women, um, who is a friend of ours, um, uh, Harinder Mali. And where's Harinder? Yes, there you are, right in front of me. Thank you, Harinder. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure. And, and we, of course, know that you have a, uh, a very specific link to the Peel District School Board, of course, with your, your past experience with us. And we know that you're a champion for us. So thank you for being here. And, and uh, really wonderful to continue to speak with you informally and formally. So thank you. And uh, also uh, very pleased to, uh, again, see uh, Vic Dillon. And uh, thank you for being here. And I had the pleasure myself of, of speaking with Pardeep Singh Nagra, and I'm so pleased that we're going to continue our conversation about the value of what we need to do together collectively to support our students so they really get an understanding of who they are as, as um, individuals and what they can bring to our collective society. So thank you to Sandalwood Heights Secondary School. Thank you to our staff and to our wonderful students. Um, I wish I could have spent much more time, and I know I'm going to go back afterwards and connect with each and every one of you. You spoke with such passion and such knowledge about your heritage, your culture, your religion, and uh, we really value that you value who you are as individuals and as a collective. Uh, so excited to, uh, to speak with you and, and uh, the, the questions that, that I continue to have, um, they're at your fingertips. So I'm so proud and pleased that you know who you are and you can share that with your peers. So let me just say, uh, I'm, I'm happy to he be here to represent the Peel District School Board, one of the largest school boards in uh, the province and certainly in the country. Um, I'm proud to say that we have, uh, we speak uh, diversity. There are 50 major languages in our board. Uh, we represent so many different cultures, so many backgrounds, and, and what I continue to see wherever we go in our school board is I see students that value each other and make connections and honor um, each other in, in everything that they do. 
Um, I, and, and I thank you, thank the ministry. Um, we are collaborative in our pursuit of excellence for our students, ensuring that they have opportunities to develop their interest, to understand themselves, to bring their strengths and their passion to their, their own learning and develop eventually into incredible uh, productive members of our society. So um, I'm excited to, to uh, hear about uh, uh, continued uh, announcements and, and opportunities that I know the ministry provides for us um, as we do the work collectively to support our students. So thank you. Thank you for the honor and the privilege of being here this morning. And I look forward to, uh, to more connections with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director Joshua, for your kind and very encouraging words. We're excited to welcome our next speaker, the Minister of the Status of Women and Member of Provincial Parliament, Harinder Mali. Minister and MPP Mali is no stranger to education and to the Peel District School Board. Prior to her new role, she served as a school trustee and re represented Brampton Wards 9 and 10 for the Peel Board. Please welcome Ms. Harinder Mali. Thank you so much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's always a pleasure to be here. So many friends and colleagues in the room. Um, Superintendent Noble, thank you. And our principal, vice principals here today, thank you for having us. Uh, it's always great to come home to our schools in our neighborhood. I, education holds a special place in my heart and the time that I spent with the Peel District School Board tells me about all, has all of the shared values that we have. And the reason why I went over to um, run for provincial office because education was important to me, our students, and our youth were important to me and our government has been focused on providing great opportunities for these students and for these youth and of course for our community here in Brampton. So thank you for having me here. Students, you did an absolutely outstanding job on all of the presentations that you put together today. All of the stations were great. We had an opportunity to view some of the things that you talked about including sick history and a special thank you to all of our stakeholders who are here today from different organizations to represent them as community members. I don't want to take too much away from what's going to happen here now, but I'm excited to be here as a part of this announcement. It's a really great time where we celebrate our diversity, where we celebrate, uh, Ontario is a place where we're able to celebrate our diversity. We're able to bring so many different things from so many different parts of the world here and teach it to each other. And this is what today is all about, and I'm pleased to be here to introduce my good friend and colleague, Minister Indira Nadu Harris, for this special announcement. So without further ado, we'll move on to the announcement. Thank you, Minister Mali, for that uh, lovely introduction. And you know, I know you all know this, but um, Minister Mali is absolutely a very strong voice for the people living in this area and in the community in, in Brampton. And, and uh, I've known that for years. I'm sure you've all known that even longer than I have, but, uh, but she uh, is uh, a very strong speaker and a strong voice for the community here. Good morning, everyone. Bonjour, bonjour, Ani, Satsriakal. I can't tell you all how pleased I am to be here with you all this morning for this very important but also very special announcement. You know, uh, I think that this announcement is absolutely going to help our young people at school feel strong, informed, and confident about themselves. And so being able to walk around this morning and meet up with so many fine young people who are doing such great work and to see their displays was just really an, an underlying emphasis to me in terms of the great work that's happening here and just how important the work that we are doing here is. So an announcement today that I know will help put all students on, in Ontario on a strong path to success. I'd like to start by acknowledging that Brampton is located on the traditional territory of many Indigenous peoples going back countless generations, and I want to show my respect for their contributions in building what is now Ontario and Canada. I, of course, want to thank the staff, students, and teachers here at Sandalwood Heights Secondary School for welcoming us so warmly today. And you young people were just so into it, so energetic and so energized by, uh, by the uh, pieces that you were making sure that we were informed about and the history and, and so on. So it, it really came through very clearly in the conversations that I had. You know, this is an amazing school. 
It is amazing because it's a wonderful example of what a true, integrated, accepting learning environment can be. And that's what makes this school so great and my morning's experiences with all of you so great. Because I was talking to young people from all over the world. And it was really great to see just how well everybody worked together and supported each other and helped each other out and made sure that I knew what was going on and kind of led me along the way and taught me what I needed to know. So the staff, teachers, and students at Sandalwood Heights have managed to create a wonderful learning environment that cultivates a culture, a culture for student success. So thank you, thank you for your hard work, thank you for your dedication, and thank you for building a strong foundation for our kids. And thank you, uh, Director Peter Joshua, for your kind words earlier and for your leadership uh, in this board. I would like to recognize again my colleague, Harinder Mali, the MPP for Brampton Springdale, and she is now the minister responsible for status of women. I just want you to know she is a wonderful friend. She has now just joined cabinet and she's doing a fantastic job. But also here today is someone that is very special to me and has been a good friend for many, many years. And he is a man all of you know very well. And that is MPP Vic Dillon, who I know is no stranger to all of you, but is right here in front of me. And you know, it is so wonderful and I'm so pleased to be here with Vic because Vic is someone who has for years, even before I was elected, been out there and speaking about the things that need to be uh, fought for and that people need to be aware of when it comes for, uh, to the community. He has been a strong advocate for this community. I want you to know that in a very real way. And he is a good, solid human being. And it has been a pleasure for me to work with him and beside him and really be here today with both uh, MPP and Minister Mali and, and MPP uh, Dylan. And so please, will you help me give them a round of applause because I think they deserve it. Also joining us today is Pardeep Singh Nagra. Oh, right there, there you are, of course. Executive Director of the Sikh Heritage Museum of Canada, a very important role, and a museum that plays uh, such a key and vital uh, role in terms of the building of our province. Uh, he and the museum are uh, one of our main partners in this collaboration, and it's wonderful to have him here. You know, this school has a great motto, reach for new heights. And that motto absolutely captures what we are trying to do here today. It speaks to the type of strong education system our government is working tirelessly to build for all students across this great province. So that no matter who our students are, what their backgrounds are, or where they come from, they will be able to reach new heights. It's about equity. It's about diversity. It's about creating a strong path forward for all of our kids when it comes to education. But we know, we know that we can't reach new heights in our lives without collaboration, without partnerships. If there's one thing I've learned in the world, it's about that's where the true magic happens. When we work with other people, when you hear their perspectives and their points of view, and when you learn from it, it also comes and becomes part of your narrative and your story. All you have to do is listen and be welcoming to people's other ideas. And so that's why I'm pleased to tell you today about an important project that we've been working on. It's a partnership that is created with the vision that together we can be stronger. Together we can reach new heights. And it's about helping students, helping our students in Ontario better understand our country's rich history and people, and to support and promote diverse perspectives in our schools. After all, our curriculum has to reflect our students, our province, and our communities. Because, after all, who we are and where we come from is the force that drives us forward and it drives us all forward together. You know, we are so fortunate to live in one of the country's most diverse provinces, Ontario. And that's why our equity and inclusive education strategy is critical for Ontario schools. Embracing diversity is key. It's key to the success of our students. It's key to the success 
of our communities, and it's key to the success of our province. I'm sure you've all heard that our diversity is our strength, but nothing could be more true. Nothing could be more true. And we live in a province and a country that recognizes that. In this room alone, there are people from all over the world. We've all had different experiences, and we all arrived here because of that very reason, because of that diversity, because of that acceptance, and because our young people have room to grow. So the key to the success of our students is, of course, identifying and removing discriminatory practices, systemic barriers, and biases from schools and classrooms. And we're doing this with our Education Equity Action Plan, something we're very proud of through the Education Equity Secretariat. And that's why I am so proud to stand here before all of you today to tell you all about another initiative that we're working on, which builds on all of this work. So I'm here today to announce that we have been developing a voluntary curriculum linked resource on Canadian Sikh heritage and history. Think about that. It is absolutely something that we should be all proud of. But I feel that it is something that all of you young people in this room should really remember. Because you were here on the day when we announced that this was going to be a resource that all of you and your teachers and educators could draw on. It's one of a number of resources available for our students to learn more about our province and the people, the people that make up our province, that dynamic piece with people moving in and moving, and moving here from other places. So this project is possible because of a close collaboration between our government, and now I'm gonna list all of our partners, there's quite a few, the Ontario Elementary Social Studies Teachers Association, the Ontario Art Education Association. Actually, I'm gonna ask some of you to put up your hands if you're in the room. The Ontario Elementary Social Studies Association. Anyone here from there? Okay. The Ontario Art Education Association the Ontario Association of Geographic and Environmental Educators, the Ontario Library Association, and of course, the Sikh Heritage Museum of Canada. It's a remarkable set of partners, people who come together and came together to create a remarkable resource to build a strong future for all of our children. You know, I'm gonna tell you a little story. I know I'm taking up a lot of your time, but I think it's particularly important today. Years ago, when I was growing up in Alberta, I wound up becoming a journalist, a television journalist, and at the time I was told I was one of the first ever women of color to have become a television journalist in the province of Alberta. I was living in Edmonton, and I remember being asked to go and speak to a school, a classroom of kids, uh, as part of what I was doing, about being a journalist and what that was like and so on. I remember walking into that room, and this was decades ago, and it wasn't a diverse classroom. In fact, not at all. But I remember very clearly walking into that room, remember one of the first women, uh, people of color to even be on television in that province, so that was creating a little bit of a stir. And there was one kid in the classroom, and it was a boy who I, my eyes met him, and his eyes met mine. And he was sitting there in the classroom in the middle of all of these kids, and he had a turban on. And he sat there, and when I walked into the room, he sat straighter, he sat taller, and when I started to speak, he smiled. And the interesting thing was when I walked into that room, I felt like he was kind of huddled down and kind of a little quieter and a little shy. It was a very emotional moment for me. Because in that, by stepping into that classroom, I understood the power of acceptance, of confidence, and of our diversity, and how important it is for all of us, especially our young people in our classrooms, to feel confident about who they are. And so I hope you don't mind, but I wanted to share that story with you today because I think it absolutely speaks to what we are doing here today, and the gift that we're giving our kids, all kids in our province, no matter who they are and where they come from, the ability to see themselves reflected in our curriculum. 
In fact, the development of these great resources marks another step in our effort to reach new heights. It's a concrete example, a solid example of our government's commitment to shifting away from a one-size-fits-all approach, the kind that I grew up around decades ago, I won't tell you how long ago, in our curriculum, to one that gives room. It gives room to our educators, it gives room to our students, it gives room to our local leaders and our communities to really respond to a changing set of dynamics and a diversity of contexts and cultures and needs. And so this is so important because we know through research and evidence that students, when they see themselves positively reflected in their curriculum, they can move forward. Because you can't see, you can't move forward if you don't know who you are and you don't see yourself reflected. In fact, our Education Equity Action Plan is developing more culturally responsive and culturally relevant teaching resources. These resources, including those on the history of sick Canadians, mark a shift towards providing all students with more culturally responsive curriculums. We know we have more work to do, absolutely, but this is a step. The history of all the people who have built this great country and province will be reflected in the things we do moving forward. In fact, stories such as the heartbreaking one about the Komagata Maru, as painful as they are, must be told. They must become part of our collective memory and part of our fabric, the fabric that makes up Ontario. Students across Ontario must know and understand our country's complex historical legacies. It helps to understand who we are. And with that, I want to acknowledge many thanks to a strong advocate here today, and that's MPP Dillon. MPP Dillon brought forward a motion in the legislature regarding the Komagata Maru and was passed. His support for the federal government's decision to offer a full apology and calling upon future federal governments to never again enact immigration laws based on one's religion, ethnicity, gender, race, or any other discriminatory grounds. And that piece was so important, and I think he deserves a round of applause for doing that. Our education system has a vital role to play in shaping students' ideas and beliefs and their future. In many instances, they will be called on to make critical judgments. They need to understand who their brothers and sisters and neighbors are standing beside them and with them, and so that they can really make the right choices and decisions. It is only through knowledge, it is only through understanding, it is only through recognizing our collective histories that we can be strong together. And so as Minister of Education, it's important to me that students are exposed to diverse narratives and that all students see themselves reflected in the stories about our province and country um, so that we can move forward as one, with one voice together. And so we're grateful for your work here at this school and with, to all our partners, and we are looking forward to seeing the final products. You know, I know I took a little bit of extra time today, but I want you all to know that I think this is a very strong and important piece for our province and for our communities. And so it really meant something to me to be here with you all today and make this announcement. Um, merci, thank you, miigwech. Thank you for coming out. And I think Simran, you're coming back up. Thank you very much for having me. I'd like to thank both the MPP and the Minister for your kind, strong, and powerful words, and hopefully we will grow together as a community. And our final speaker of, the, of today's event is the Executive Director of the Sikh Heritage Museum, Mr. Pardeep Singh Nagro. As a historian, researcher, and public speaker who promotes and talks about the Sikh pioneer and military history in Canada, he has really helped teaching students and teaching many others about what Sikhi means and how important it is to accept diversity. So please come up. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I first want to acknowledge the indigenous lands that we are on here today gathered for. I also want to recognize and celebrate Black History Month um, as part of the Sikh Heritage Museum, and before I get into the curriculum piece for which we're here to talk about, uh, we showcase some of the rich history that we have with uh, the Black Canadian experience at the Sikh Heritage Museum of Canada. Some of you might not know that um, William Hall, 
the very first black recipient of the Victoria Cross in Canada. Uh, one is Battle, uh, one is Victoria Cross in India, alongside Sikhs in 1857. Um, you also might not know that, uh, and I was looking at some of the books over there that you have for Black History Month, and you have Nelson Mandela there, that when Nelson Mandela was freed, um, the first country he visited on his freedom was Canada. Uh, he's also an honorary Canadian citizen, and the Sikh community here in Peel, uh, 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 a leader of the Sikh community met with Nelson Mandela and uh, presented him with a plaque and also funds. Uh, and we know that he eventually uh, went on to become uh, president. And that plaque that was given uh, sits in his house in South Africa. And uh, we have a picture of that uh, in the museum as well. And so I want to uh, be able to share that uh, we have integrated experiences as well as Canadians when we look at our history. And um, when we're looking at the project that we're here to announce, I think it's fundamentally important because Mary Batiste said, Education can either maintain domination or it can liberate. It can either colonize in neo-colonial ways or it can decolonize. Every school is a site of reproduction or a site of change. We're here to look at the three variables of decolonizing, liberating, and changing. There is no reason why I come and stand before you as a former student from kindergarten right through in those days, grade 13, of a student appeal here. To know that you are still being taught the same curriculum that I was taught. You are use, using the same curriculum, the same novels, the same stories. That just can't happen anymore because we are not teaching diversity, we're teaching to diversity. So there has to be a fundamental shift. In my work in equity, I've worked in every single aspect and I realized that the biggest and quickest and most important shift that we can make is in curriculum. And that's why I want to thank Minister Mully for taking the initiative to be able to uh, uh, facilitate the initial meetings for this project to come to fruition. There's many of us in front of us, and when we're talking about friends and colleagues, Vic and I went to high school together, and, and, and Trustee uh, Singh and I have, we, we meet every single time we can. And our number one responsibility when we talk, and even the conversation I had with, with the Director of Education here, was about one thing and one thing only. When we're talking about inclusive uh, education, we're talking about student success. When I am uh, looking on any project I work with, it's about student success. And student success is based on their ability to see themselves reflected in the curriculum. And that is fundamentally important. And so even as I was sitting where you're sitting and I was looking at the wall behind there and I'm looking at the different names of quotes from different literature there from To Kill a Mockingbird and stuff like that, uh, I'd rather quote something else because if your vision in this school is to reach higher, then think about Rupi Kaur, the best-selling Canadian author right now, one of the world's best-selling authors, who said that our job is to equip the, uh, the next generation of women to outdo us in every single field. That's called progress. That's called reaching new heights. That's what you should know, because that's, that's a fellow uh, Peel resident. That's a fellow Canadian. That's what this curriculum is doing that we're creating. You have a right to know that we are not an immigrant community in Canada. We're a pioneer community in Canada. We've been here when the railroads were being built and we were building the railroads. We worked uh, in the lumber mills. We worked in the cement quarries. You have a right to know that people who look like you spoke at the Empire Club and Canada Club in 1912, fighting for the rights for us to be full Canadians. You have a right to know that we're disenfranchised in 1907 to vote, yet we still served for Canada and the rest of the Commonwealth in World War I. You have a right to know that in fact people who look like us were in World War I in France before Canada as a country entered the war. Mm -hmm. You have a right to know that the Komogatamaru story has a legacy to it, that 100 years after the Komogatamaru, the minister of multiculturalism in Canada was a turban Sikh who was actually born in Vancouver. That's called legacy. That's called perseverance. That's called a pioneer story. And these are the types of stories that we're infusing in the curriculum. And so it's going to be a curriculum that's responsible for all Ontarians. 
it's not just about uh, the six. When anytime we get asked, and it's going to be coming up in April, Sikh Heritage Month, and I said, are you celebrating Sikh heritage and, and culture? I said, no. I'm celebrating Canadian heritage and Ontario heritage. I'm just using six as a lens to share that Canadian story. It speaks to when, when the Prime Minister had visited Sikh Heritage Museum, and he said, thank you for all the hard work that went to showing the, sto uh, the, the story of the Sikh community, which is in fact just the story of Canada. So when we're talking about inclusive stories, we're talking about Ontario stories and Canadian stories, for which we're all part of, and, and, and stories that have not been part of our curriculum. And so I urge students to engage in curriculum that's inclusive to you. I encourage faculty and staff here to uh, uh, engage in a curriculum disruption. And I really want to thank uh, the government and the, and the, and the ministry um, for their uh, progressive effort in creating a more inclusive curriculum towards student success. Thank you very much for your time. Before we conclude this event, I would like to thank once again Mr. Pardeep Singh Naga for your amazing words and so, so many inspiring things you have said for us to grow as a community and to grow and include so many other individuals and make this place more diverse than it already is. And also, I would like to start off by thanking everyone who participated in this event and making this event possible. We are proud that the teachers got involved and managed to do all this within a quite small time limit, as well as getting the students to take time out of their classes, attend this gallery, and also participate in making sure that everyone feels involved. We are proud that we have many guests here who actually understand on how to make this community grow to become better, stronger, and happier. So thank you.